Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a special treat for you. This is not work that I have done. This is work that I have purchased from other artists on Etsy and different sites. And I just wanted to show you how special people package their gifts, some inspiration of ideas, the way people create things. Just sometimes we need that little start and looking at other people's work is a great start. This is a brooch that I bought from Marina Ebert Art and this is how she packaged it. I ordered the brooch and it came with this beautiful other brooch, this little frog that's made out of fabric and has a little crown on it. Super cute with the legs, it's beaded. Absolutely adorable. And then she put it in this beautiful box. This is exactly how I received it. I normally don't open things on camera, but this was so nicely packaged. I wanted to show that. Inside is this beautiful, I loved this because the white raven is just so unusual. Everybody does them in black, and I thought it was just so interesting that she did hers in white. And there's a pin back on the back, and she used this filigree to put her little beads from. It's just beautifully done and just such a great inspiration piece. I absolutely love this. It's so different and so unique looking. I love her work. My next piece is from Clay Accessories and she packaged these in these little cellophane bags. She also had some, it looked like she had hand dyed some dryer sheets and wrapped it up in them, but my husband as usual pitched them. But they're so beautiful. Look at her workmanship, her details. And these are some natural freshwater pearls. She finishes off the back with some embossing and pastels and some gold paint, so beautiful. And she has these tiny little crystal rondelles on the bottom, little rhinestone rondelles. And there's little rhinestones in each one of these little cup flowers. So beautiful, so delicate and little rhinestones at the bottom, but she's handmade all of this filigree work. So when you look at polymer clay and you think, oh wow, what would I do with that? Look at what the imagination can do. This artist is simply amazing. And I bought another one from her, and this is also from Clay Accessories. And this one, I, I just saw this on Pinterest and I had to immediately go purchase it because I thought this was spectacular with these cranes on it and this little filigree work that looks like jewels almost as trees in the background. The way she's done it, it looks like gemstones and little tiny mums and the water in the background. It's just, I think it's mica that she's put in the background for the water and just these beautiful blue stones that mimic the water. And she's got little tiny rhinestones. I wanna get as close as I can with this without the camera going out on me, but look at what kind of artwork some people can imagine, just spectacular. And this filigree is an added piece that she's put on, but it just complements it all so well. And her imagination and the way she's bezeled around her stones, just spectacular. Now she did use plastic crystals at the bottom instead of glass. And I'm actually glad she did because I don't like a weighty earring. And these are probably glass, these two cabochons here because she's baked them and that would have added a lot of weight had she added crystal ones. So sometimes when you're thinking, oh, I don't wanna add plastic to my work, depends on where you're using it because this will definitely keep the earring a much lighter and much more comfortable weight. And to me, it looks just as nice. And on the back, she's of course had a beautiful embossing back and finished it with some, a little filigree piece, which I love how she's done that and some gold paint. Such really, really spectacular work. I'm just so impressed with her attention to detail. And then I've gotten this, actually I got this as a gift from a girlfriend and I cannot wait to bead with it. It is from Raven's Meadow on Etsy and I love this rough and rustic crackle she has in the background. I love the little moon over the rabbit with the, it's just so Alice in Wonderland looking. It's totally me. And on the back, it's just plain, like a cabochon, which is fine. I'm probably going to take the wire off of this and bead around it instead, just because I want some fringe coming off the bottom. But I just loved her work and really wanted to share this with you because this was all done probably with white clay and some rinses on it, some different color washes. But how she's done it is so interesting and so beautiful. Now, this is a very well-known artist from Russia, Jewelry Lominska. I see her all the time on Facebook and Pinterest. Her work is extremely different. Here's just a 
business card that shows one of her necklaces if you check her out. She's very, very unique. And all of these artists are unique in their own way. She packages in this little box and I just love her work. She has a lot of sculptural faces and things. I bought this necklace with the intention of restringing it. She is an amazing sculptural artist. She's not a bead artist, which is just fine because I will probably set this off onto a piece of felt with some fabric because these little pieces, as you can see my finger through here, are very, very delicate and I don't want them to catch on anything. So I feel like if I put a little felt backing, I know nothing will happen to this because I just love the dimensionality of this piece. You can see how thick the fish is and how it really looks like it's swimming through the water. It's a beautiful koi fish. She has added these little flat back rhinestones as details. This looks like a vintage rhinestone, which are my favorite. It's got a very strange cut to it, which gives it a watery effect. And I love how her imagination worked with the coral on top that she's created. Just so unique and so different. But the chain does not do this justice, so I will definitely have to reset this onto something else. I'll put it in one of my gallery videos when I finish it because I do love to incorporate other people's work with my work. Don't be afraid if you're not this level of an artist or sculptor. Purchase it from someone else and add your own twist to it. Add your own beads. Do something better. Like I said, this artist is not a beater. She is a sculptor. So the two of us together can make this even more fabulous. And that's all you have to think about is how can I take something like this and take it to the next level? And this one I had to buy my daughter and I both fell in love with this. It's not everybody's type of thing, this crazy kind of a pin. It's a tongue sticking out with little vampire fangs. I just, it was in my, one of my Halloween opens. Maybe you've noticed it, maybe you haven't, but her realism with her lips and her tongue and her teeth is so incredible. This is made from Tristiana Handmade and she makes all of them to order. So it takes a little bit of a weight, but look at how she's got the realism in that tongue and underneath that tongue. And look at how beautifully she sculptured this. It's, she's got resin obviously on all of this, but she's just got it at the right thickness. Get, not getting too much resin on the lips or too much resin on the teeth is quite an art. It's so easy to overdo this and make it not look so realistic that this piece is super cool. And my daughter wants it back, of course, but I, have to, I had to steal it for this video because I just thought it was so fun and interesting. And here's an interesting piece from the artist Alice Trapel. She's the one that we've all made the canes with our leftover bits and pieces where we stack them up. A Strapel cane, that is the artist. And this is her work. She loves to do faces and she uses little canes as decorating pieces around her faces. Very clever. And she does something very unique that I've never seen another artist do. And she makes a signature cane that she puts on her piece. I thought that was really interesting. Sometimes people do a little stamp with their initials, but this was an actual cane she created, which was really cool. She does her bracelets a little differently. She leaves the brass core inside and glues it back onto that so that it stays as a solid piece. Where many of us just take it off the aluminum, she keeps it on top, she crazy glues it down so that you have a nice solid piece. And here's an amazing piece from an artist you all know, Teresa Salgado. She sent me this after I did the collab video with her, and I'm so honored to own a piece of her work. And look at how beautiful that gloss is with the deep shine on her centerpiece. And these other beads are just perfectly made. And you can see how pretty they are, how she wraps them with her canes. I just love these. I love her color combination too. And she did a silk screen on the back with the scraps. How beautiful. And I see she's used a little layer of gold glitter clay. Really interesting in there. I love how that looks the way she sandwiched it. Looks so beautiful. And I love the, just the simplicity of it. Sometimes I don't like things that are too busy, even though I always do too busy kind of stuff. I love just the beauty of this. I love these boho -y. It's almost got like a tie-dye feel to it. And I like that they're not perfect because that makes them look more like a tie-dye, kind of a natural look. But I love the way she did the little drop on the earrings. And Teresa Salgado is also Tiny Pandora, so if you're wondering 
which is which, she's the same one in one. And here's a piece that I have to really get close up. This is a notebook and it has from the most fabulous, amazing, magical caner there is in this world. John Anderson. His work is so distinctive that he really doesn't even need to sign his work because we all know his work just from his pieces. Look at that and the detail. Let me get even closer if I can. So you can see the detail. It's so fine. And I know that his canes are like 12 by 14 when he starts. They're huge, truly amazing work. If you can own a piece of John Anderson's work, it's like having a piece of Picasso in your house. I just absolutely love his work. Moving on to some beading. Here is Elena Valiva, and she makes these bird brooches that are simply amazing. If you find them online, buy it because she usually has many customers that want to buy them, and she really literally cannot make enough for the demand. So I was fortunate enough to grab this at three o'clock in the morning one night and I was just overwhelmed. I actually bought this as a gift for a friend because it was just such a spectacular piece. Now, if I pull it up closer, you can see she's layered up all of these individual little sequins to look like feathers. And there's some raffia here and some twisted sequins here. And then she's just got some beading around the top, but she also wires this little foot to make it so unique. I don't know if she has an artist to make her the beak or not, but her pieces are truly one of a kind. If you look on the back, she was really brilliant by putting two pin backs so that you can see it will stay in one place. It won't wobble back and forth. And she does something really neat with her pin backs. I love the way that she puts the sequin over her stitch. So it just finishes it off nicely with a little size 15 bead. Very clever. But the artistry here is really what you're buying. Sequins are not that expensive. You're buying her creativity and her vision of what to do with those sequins and make them into something really spectacular. I can just see this on a coat, how really gorgeous this would look. It's a little bit of a bigger piece, but it's definitely a special piece. And this one is from Polly Creates on Etsy. And this one is true artistry. I honestly don't know how people do this. So if you're gonna ask me, how do you do something like this? I haven't a clue. This is a special eye that you can see the colors and the way she puts these beads and builds them up. And look at that amazing. I love Frida Kahlo, she's one of my favorites. And this just paid such homage to her, I had to have it. It wasn't an option of whether anyone else was going to get it, I had to have this piece. And the artistry, when I bring it closer, I want you to see it's just all little tiny 15s and delicas, just little 11s, just tiny seed beads. That's all this is created from. That's simply amazing. I don't know how she really does it, but this is true artistry. And she's just started selling on Etsy. So if you wanna check her out, she doesn't have a lot of items because a piece like this is very time consuming. I would love to watch her do this in, in a sped up video just because her work is so fascinating. And this is from Brushminska. And I actually ordered this for a friend, but then I fell in love with it so much that I had to order one for me. Now, there's not a lot of beadwork in here. This is mostly embroidery that she's made this from. This is all embroidered, these wings. And then she's put, if you look real close, just little tiny seed beads on top, just giving this most delicate sparkle. And she's made the body all out of velvet. She's got like, probably a piece of cardboard in here as a base. And then she's got this beautiful lace piece overlaying the brooch, how beautifully she's done this. And just these little wire legs and the velvet on the back. And most of these artists recycle old clothes and things to do this with, so it makes it even more interesting to me. Now she has these little tiny piece of tulle around her rhinestone and then this kind of wispy fibers. I've never seen anyone do that before, but it gave it such depth and dimension and such creativity that I had to order one for myself because I was just overwhelmed with the intricacies of her work. Look at even the little antennae, how they come out. 
so delicate, so beautiful, and this actually doesn't weigh much. And she packaged it in this little box so it looks like it's in a nest. And she gave me a little bracelet as a token gift. Very sweet. And this is from one of my most favorite bead artists on Etsy, Brooch from Stars. And you'll understand why when you see it. Yes, yes, that's my little dog. And it's all created out of beads. She does animal portraits with beads. I've never seen anyone else do this. And hers are so perfect and so unique. And she added the little crown for me because I said, that one's definitely a princess. She needs a crown. And look at how amazing this is just done with regular different seed beads that you use, crystals, unlike the Frida Kahlo, which I think is amazing. And as you can see, different artists like to use different types of beads in this portrait type of a form. These are more the smaller beads and that's how she gets such amazing detail to that face. This artist, Yulia, does all different beads with hers and she gets this more dimensional effect when you look at them close up. I still find them both absolutely amazing and fascinating how anybody could see that in the beads. I wish I could see things like that, but since I can't, I just appreciate the people that can and how talented and amazing they are. And since my daughters saw that, they both wanted one of their dogs, and this is my daughter's dog, Pigsley. She's a little red miniature pincher, and she's very old, so she's lost her teeth and her tongue sticks out all the time. So my daughter was like, I really want the tongue sticking out because that's how I love her. Absolutely amazing, all created out of just little crystals and bits and baubles of beads. So fascinating that somebody could see that portrait out of those little pieces. And my other daughter said, no, 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 you can't just do one for her. She has a Chinese crested, which is actually a really hard dog to do a portrait of because it's bald. It only has hair on its face and its head like this. So she got it perfectly with these strands of hair and just, she's, it's a little bit browner than the dog actually is, but you still see the portrait in it. And it is hard for the resolution of a phone to get the grays right. It's hard to tell whether it's gray or brown sometimes, but she still got the exact character of this dog with the hair in the back of the ears the hair coming up on her head and the little whiskers that she has all over. And that, when I get real close, I want you to see is just all little tiny crystals and assorted beads. She's truly amazing. And if you notice, this is not very big. It's only like two and a half inches. So she's got that all in that small and area. Then this was, I'm obsessed with bead bugs. I think bead bugs are the most fascinating art that I find on Pinterest and Etsy. And different artists all do their bugs differently. And as you can tell, I like this pink and green palette a whole lot. And this is from Madame Toto Jewelry. And she's just done this with beads and some cup chain and different pieces in there and just some little sequins in there. And you can see the detail she gets with this tiny piece is so beautiful. You can see how she finishes it on the back so clean and neat but you could put these on a hat, you could put these on a scarf, a sweater, lots of neat things. You can even, if you have a cloth purse, they make a great purse charm. You don't necessarily have to have a coat to put something like this on. You can use it anywhere. And I just love the artistry of everybody that does beaded bugs. They're all so different and so unique that I just adore all of them. Now this piece I bought in a gift shop, but I had to share it with you because I had never seen one before. This is all done. It looks like it's mostly brick stitch and um, some right angle weave. All done with Delicas and size 11 beads. Isn't this amazing? Don't know where she got it from. The gift shop didn't have any info on it. She just said to me that she had bought them from a salesperson and couldn't get them anymore but I had to have him because he was just such a unique beaded piece and living in Florida, I have all these little lizards everywhere. It's just such a cool little gecko piece and out of beads, I just love the design on the background and how the legs have each little wire form for the little feet on them and just a crystal eye really, really an interesting piece. So when you look at beads, don't always think of them just as jewelry. There's lots of other decorative things you can use them for. Now I just wanted to quickly show you this piece. This was a piece that was from my last video. It's from Sandrevo Jewelry 
and this was a brooch, but I didn't want a brooch. I really wanted a necklace out of this piece, so I purchased it anyway. And the beauty of this is, because it was just done all in greens, and I loved the little stone she put at the bottom, I could add any color I chose. So I could add purples, greens, blues, whatever I wanted. I chose pink because I just felt like I wanted this to have a pink kind of gardeny look. And so anything that you find and you see it from another artist, you can incorporate it into your work. Don't be afraid to alter it a little. Sometimes I can't create something like this. I really like somebody else's work like this and I wanted to incorporate it in mine. So just take it apart and beat it into your work. You can incorporate things and change them up. So if there's a pair of earrings that you absolutely love but they're too big, you could make those into a pendant and use one as a gift and one for yourself. So you don't have to necessarily leave things as they are if they don't totally suit your style. I hope I gave you lots of ideas and inspiration and thanks for watching.